time to pack that sunscreen, hop into your favorite boardies or bikini, get ready to tan your body and refresh your mind. Destination Sanya for some sea, sand and culture. Hi, I'm Mark Edwards. Welcome to Travelog and welcome to Sanya, this tropical paradise off the south coast of China on the island of Hainan. We've got clear blue waters, soft white sand and weather much like this all year round. But just in case you're thinking it's just going to be about getting a tan, there's plenty more things to do here as well. So in case it's raining where you are, snowing where you are or even just a little bit cold, hopefully we'll get to warm you up a bit over the next half an hour. Sanya is undoubtedly one of China's most developed tourist meccas. It announced its refurbished arrival on the world scene when it hosted the Miss World pageants in 2003, 2004 and 2005. And its burgeoning reputation has continued to flourish ever since. Located on the southern tip of the island of Hainan, or China's Hawaii as it is sometimes known, here the pearl white beaches and swaying palm trees proclaim that this is China's tropical paradise. It's a far cry from its Tang Dynasty roots some 1500 years ago when it was seen as a place of exile where disgraced officials were banished to a fate the rulers in those days saw as marginally better than death. At the time, Hainan was viewed as the end of the world as it sat on the edge of imperial China. These days, gone are the misbehaving officials and in are the eager tourists. In fact, this rush of tourism has helped propel the industry to such levels that you'll find almost all of the major hotel chains already prevalent here or desperately scrambling for a foothold on and around the city's beaches. The hotels on show here leave no doubt as to Sanya's status as a fully paid up member of the international resort world. So for most people that come to Sanya, this is what it's all about. If not, it's certainly a huge part. I'm on the private, secluded and beautiful Yalong Bay Beach. White sand everywhere. It's about nine kilometers with hotels door to door. And you know what? It's no wonder that this is Hainan, number one holiday resort. There are roughly 40 kilometers or so of coastline dedicated to tourism here, making up the area known as Sanya. In fact, it's split into three distinct zones. The beach closest to the bustling city centre is Sanya Bay, probably the least impressive beach with all things considered. Next up is the more attractive Dadong Hai Bay. Situated on the southeast side of Sanya, it's a haven of activities for both the adventurous and the timid. Last, but in no way least, the number one beach in Hainan can be found 28 kilometres southeast of Sanya city centre. Yalong Bay's crescent-shaped beach is one long strip of clean white sand bordered by rolling blue waters and luxury hotels. The atmosphere in Sanya, and unsurprisingly within the hotels, is a permanent joviality. It's a holiday destination through and through, where almost everyone is here to wind down, relax and have a good time. So popular has it become that more tourism-friendly visa regulations apply than compared to China as a whole. For instance, citizens of 21 different countries, including the US, France and the UK, can apply for a visa on arrival at the airport if they did not have time to get one back home. Work getting to you? Can't decide where to get some spur of the moment sun to revitalize? Think no more. Yanoda. 
I've been told there's going to be a bit of adventure today, some hiking, who knows what else. Now, the start of our adventure is actually going to be around lunchtime where I've been uh, told that we're going to have a rather special little lunch. They do medicated food. I'm not sure if I heard it right, but they medicate the food. So the normal Chinese dishes, but they use all these different flowers, such as the betel flower. I don't know if it's going to be good for me, but hopefully it will fill me up before a good hike. Now, got to warn you, make sure you bring yourself some water. I've got my backpack with some water and mosquito repellent. Now, I should have learned my lesson. If you have a quick look, look at that. That was yesterday. I didn't learn my lesson. I didn't put any on today. Look at that one. That's just now. So make sure you bring a lot of this. I'm going to go and grab some of that lunch. See you in a sec. So the food looks absolutely amazing. I'm starving. It's all medicated, as I explained before. So there's special types of herbs and flowers all over it. Nobody else is here yet, but there's no point letting it go cold. So let's see what it's like. Mark, Mark, your foot is over here. Come on. Can I not? No, let's go. Laziness generally tends to get a bad rap but no one usually begrudges you a week lying around on a beach. However, in Sanya, things can get a little bit different. We've headed 42 kilometers northeast of the city to prove to you that there is life beyond the beach here. And it simply has to be lived. Yanada Rainforest Preserve is your best bet to experience the raw, natural beauty of Hainan's tropical rainforests. You don't just have to be a budding horticulturalist, ornithologist or zoologist to enjoy the delights of Yanada. There's space for all you adrenaline or adventure junkies as well. Grab a buggy and head up to the waterfalls deep in the Yanada jungle. They'll equip you with some very trendy slip-proof straw shoes to give you added traction on the slippery rocks. And you'll be supported by a team of professional and at times slightly crazy instructors. Well, I've got to admit, it was a slightly slow pace to start with, but it's a weird feeling going across. I mean, you're not really, you, feel, you do feel safe, even though you know that anything can happen. You're not tied to anything. We've got these helmets, but yeah, it is pretty exhilarating. I'm very excited about the next part where the waters are really crashing down and you're just holding on. Get the blood pumped, it really does. So you might have tried abseiling or whitewater rafting. Now combine elements from both and head uphill or stream rather than down and you've got yourself this extreme form of rock climbing. It's intense and great fun as an individual or part of a bigger group. Plus, you'll get to take the most natural outdoor shower you'll ever have. If the sheer fun and adventure of the climbing isn't enough, there's an even bigger reward at the top. A traditional Lee ethnic minority village. Here you'll come face to face with one of Hainan's original minority groups, whose forefathers are said to have migrated to the island from Fujian some 3,000 years ago. Today, the Lee ethnic group number over a million people. They spent the majority of history as rice farmers and hunters. When you get to the village though, you'll find that music is the order of the day, together with some hearty dancing. Like many other ethnic minorities, the Lee people are accomplished singers and dancers. The bamboo pole dance is probably the most attractive, most famous, and for some, the hardest to get to grips with. Here, the great thing is, there's no judging of people on their dance skills. Whether you're appalling or simply look ridiculous doing it. Dancing is hard enough without the added distraction of bamboo sticks flying all over the place. 
so it's usually better to let the pros show you how it's done. Their dance moves arise mainly from their work in the field, pestling the rice and worshipping ancestors and so on. With free shuttle buses running from Sanya every day, it's almost a sin to miss out on the beautiful landscape and diversity of flora and fauna. There are over 1,400 different types of trees to be found here, as well as a whole plethora of wildlife. Though the day at Yanada may have been exhausting, those of you with some fuel left in the tank simply have to make the shortest journey from Sanya to Monkey Island. Home to a population of rhesus monkeys, the island is just over 70 kilometers from Sanya and connected by a cable car. history, this species of monkey has grown used to being in the media spotlight. The rhesus macaque is well known to scientists owing to its relatively easy upkeep in captivity. The rest of us probably know about them thanks to one of their number, Abel, who was launched on a suborbital space flight in the early 50s and became one of the first two living creatures to travel in space and return alive. Be sure to get your picture taken with the local in-house models. It's just four monkeys earning their keep in front of the camera. One, two, three, four. High five. High five. So, if you've got the toy, make sure you make it over to Monkey Island. There's over a thousand uh, types of macaque monkeys here. Uh, they do steal your things apparently, so keep your cameras near you. It would take about 20 of them to nick our one. Uh, and also, I'm told that between February and May, it's the mating season, so they'll be particularly welcoming. Um, luckily, it doesn't seem to be any problems right now. I've just got, I'm just looking after, I'm the Queen's throne right now. That's the Queen. I'm the Queen's throne, pretty, she looks pretty relaxed, does she look relaxed? Probably a bit more than I am. Back on the main island of Hainan, and once you've washed the monkey off your back, and out of your hair, you can head about 50 kilometres northeast of Sanya, to the Nantian Hot Spring Resort. Open until late into the night, it makes an entertaining way of spending a whole day or night if you fancy soaking in one of the 40 pools of differing temperatures and health benefits. You can even go straight from the waters to your comfy hotel room for a perfect weekend getaway thanks to the adjoining luxury hotel. The best way to get here is via the free shuttle bus that runs from Sanya city centre. So I've come down to the Nantian hot spring and it's open till 11.30 at night so you can come out in a nice cool evening like this, get into a rather special hot spring in this case with these small sucker fish. Now I hear the trick is to lie completely still and then they just start nibbling all over you but there's plenty of other uh, hot springs around here to try out but I'm going to go to this one first. Good news is, the sucker fish are not picky in any way whatsoever. They started with my feet, some of them nibbling my armpits, two bits I would definitely not go for myself. But, very relaxing and kind of odd, it's kind of like, I don't know, someone's literally nibbling at your entire body, it's quite nice. It's awesome. I wish I could show you by moving my body, but then I would lose all the fish. 
，同埋乜？同埋乜？同埋乜？同埋乜？同埋乜？同埋乜？同埋乜？同埋乜？同埋乜？同埋乜？同埋乜？同埋乜？同埋乜？同埋乜？同埋乜？ Thirty kilometers northeast of Sanya, you'll find the island of Wujerjol. It's famous for its water activities and, in particular, diving. Diving in Sanya can be a bit of a mixed bag, since many of the diving sites are geared towards those who are taking their first steps in the sport. For a rookie, though, it's perfect. A, the majority of people who go there are beginner standard, and B, you'll be accompanied throughout by a certified professional who won't take his eyes off you. Scuba diving is an adventure in itself, a silent odyssey into a uniquely serene environment. And just a side note for all you fat fiends out there: the word scuba is really nothing but an acronym for the phrase self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. You're welcome. Yes, yes. Oh, my body feels heavy, but light.、Oh, I'm tired. I'm tired. Uh, you really got to go for it. The wind was blowing a bit underneath, so we're really going for it.、Um, yeah, good experience. Good experience. I love diving. We'll definitely do that again if I get a chance. Shaped like a butterfly and with a circumference of 5.7 kilometers, the island has a varied coastline, with rocky coves interspersed among sandy beaches. All of which can be discovered using the numerous rental buggies or your good old pair of legs. For those of you who want to enjoy the sunset, you can even spend the night here in one of the many hotel rooms. Having really squeezed the beach activities dry and tanned yourself to a shriveled prune level, it's probably time to take in some culture and some of Sanya's best produce. Nothing like a fresh coconut. I'll have that. On to Nanshan. Located just 40 kilometers west of Sanya city, Sanya Nanshan Buddhism Cultural Tourism Zone, a bit of a mouthful, is one of the largest cultural tourist attractions of its kind in China. This area is famous for being a hub of Buddhist culture and activity, with many worshippers believing it to be spiritually blessed. There's also a well-known Chinese saying, which translates as "good fortune as vast as the East Sea and long life as great as the Nanshan Mountain." This ardent Buddhist devotee has apparently been coming here every day for the last two years to pray at the same spot. The true embodiment. Of religious devotion. Rising out of the ocean at the end of a newly renovated causeway, the number one tourist attraction in Nanshan is, without a doubt, the statue of Guanyin, the goddess of mercy. It stands at an incredible 108 meters tall, which makes it 16 meters taller. Than the Statue of Liberty in the U.S., and more importantly, the tallest statue in the world. Another must-see is the amazing national treasure, standing at 3.8 meters high and covered 
with a hundred kilograms of gold and silver. It's embedded with 120 carats of South African diamonds, as well as countless jewels. Behind it, you'll find many duplicates of Guan Yin purchased by believers. This is to help improve their life and enhance their spiritual enlightenment by being close to Guan Yin at all times. So whilst I uh, spin my many wheels, you'll see that Nan Shan really is a place of superlative with the tallest statue in the world. And here we have the largest, certified by the Guinness Book of Records, gold and jade statue in the whole of the world as well. It's all well and good lazing around on the beach during your time in Sanya. No one's going to judge you. But if you are looking for a tiny bit more culture, head up to Nan Shan to their Buddhist cultural park. We're here today in their modern Buddhist temple, which is dedicated to the goddess of mercy, Guan Yin. Here, interestingly, she takes 33 different forms, each one with something specific in mind. So, for instance, if you're looking to have a child, you would come here and pray to this statue behind me here for a child and to the one on the right if you wanted it to be healthy. Now, obviously, this is hypothetical, but say I ended up having a healthy, handsome, beautiful child, I would then bring two sets of gifts, which is what you can see with the fruits behind me, to say thank you very much. area soaked in the Chinese traditional culture of auspiciousness and longevity, it makes total sense that the annual Hainan Longevity Festival should be held right here in the center of Nan Shan's Felicity and Longevity Culture Park. What you see in front of you is a ceremony to celebrate the people of Hainan who have reached landmark ages. It goes without saying that you'll rarely see a group of such lively centenarians together. What was fascinating to see was a large proportion of them still being able to walk unaided. This all begs the question, is the key to eternal life to be found on Hainan Island? So that's the end of the longevity ceremony for another year. Don't know if it's something to do with the water, the awesome weather or just the food, but I've never seen such sprightly 100-year-old people. I'm sat in the seats of the over 100. Do you think it will rub off a bit? Probably not. Oh, the symbol for longevity. Hopefully, if I keep in sweet, it might add a couple more years to my life. Cheers. When you make your way over to China, you'll hopefully notice that the number one thing, or certainly in the top three most important things in Chinese people's lives, food. The Chinese love their food and they live for their food. Now, I am an avid carnivore. It's all about meat for me. But I always think when you're traveling, you've got to keep an open mind. We've arrived at a Buddhist restaurant, a famous little Buddhist restaurant, which has a little twist in its tail, in that if you're a practicing Buddhist, you will tend not to eat meat. But why should you not be able to taste what meat tastes like? And that's what this restaurant does. So we have all the dishes are made purely from vegetables, but you can have yourself a steak or some fried fish just using different types of tofu or different vegetables. I don't know if it will pass my carnival test, but I'll definitely give it a go. Well, you might not become a vegetarian overnight, but at least you'll be safe in the knowledge that if you do, you'll still be able to get your hit of meat flavor from somewhere. Palm trees, the sea, what else could you want on a holiday?
Well, on top of that, sun, sand, food, culture, and adventure. Sanya really is China's tropical paradise, with a bit of everything for everyone. Time for you to try it for yourself. Final bit of the trip, if I can make it out safely. We managed to find ourselves an apt little corner to finish off the show. We're sandwiched in between two Buddhist pavilions. Now, the water's so refreshing. We've got the beach to ourselves, bit of sand, bit of rock, and a lovely sea breeze. Hope you've enjoyed the last half an hour and our trip around Sanya. Yes, the beaches are incredible. Yes, the weather, as you can see, is to die for, and the food is absolutely delicious. But I hope you've been able to witness the other, more cultural side of things, such as at the Nanshan Buddhist Cultural Park. I'm Mark Edwards, and I'll catch you very soon on another episode of Travel Up.